Well, hi, church family. I hope this video finds you well and starting to enjoy some of those first signs of summer. Uh, in just a moment, I want to talk to you about plans to reopen the church for Sunday morning services. I know that's something that many of us have been really excitedly waiting for. But while I have you, I want to comment on some of the recent events in many of our cities that have spawned murder and violence and looting and rage. You know, sin has never been more obvious in our world than right now. Sin is the underlying cause of all trouble in our world, whether it's racism or stealing or viruses, natural disasters, pride, hatred, death, all of it. All of it can be traced back to the choice of Adam and Eve to try to live life apart from God's design. And so what we're seeing today is the result of thousands of years of self-rule where man is God, determining what's best for himself. But church, the good news is that Jesus died for all of this sin. He died for your sin, he died for my sin, and he, he died for the sins of the world. Someday, someday his death will wash away all sin from the face of the earth. Someday we will have diverse nations of men and women, white and black, child and adult, worshiping side by side with no awareness of our differences, united by a common love for Jesus Christ. Things like sickness and disease, they'll be gone, along with any fear that we might have had related to those. Wars are going to cease. Fighting will stop. Looting, that will be unnecessary because we will have all that we need in Jesus. I mean, listen to this beautiful description of our future home for everyone who believes in the gospel of Jesus found in Revelation 21. Revelation 21 says this, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and this old earth has disappeared. The sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, from God, out of heaven, like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud shout from the throne, saying, Look! God's home is now among his people. Won't that be sweet? He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying or pain. All of these things will be gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. Then the one on the throne said to John, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. And all who are victorious will inherit all of these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children." Christian, this world is not our home. We are just a passing through. <laughs> While we are here, let's care for it. And let's care for the people that we're surrounded by, that we're working with, working for justice, working for peace. And let's see every opportunity of suffering because we are suffering. Every opportunity of suffering as an opportunity for the gospel to change us and to change the people that we come in contact with. Only the gospel has the power to change the human heart. In the meantime, all of this suffering is producing something great in those of us who are loved by Jesus. James chapter one says it this way, count it all joy, my brothers, joy, when you meet trials of various kinds. We have trials of various kinds, don't we? For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. 
and let steadfastness have its full effect so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Christian, where is your hope right now? Where is your trust? Jesus promises an end to all of this someday. Do you trust him? I want to invite you to come Thursday night to a special time of parking lot prayer for our nation. At 7 p.m., we're going to gather in the parking lot or in the fellowship hall if it rains, crying out to the Lord for an end to the violence, an end to racism, an end to hatred, an end to all of this hurt. Let's place our trust in the one who holds the stars, and let's lift our hearts and voices to the one who saves and delivers. So come on out and pray with us this Thursday at 7 p.m. Now, let's talk about reopening. <laughs> you know, about a month ago, the elders and the admin team drafted a plan for reopening that was based on the data and the information that we had at the time. And it was a good plan, but it was always subject to revision based on new information and how the government was moving in their own reopening. At the time, we planned to reopen when Ohio cleared us for groups of 50 and 100 and so on. Well, those numbers don't seem to be the ones that are really being used any longer, and different criteria is being established instead for reopening. All along, our desire has been to submit to our governing authorities to love our neighbors by minimizing the COVID spread along with everyone else. Keep in mind, Ohio has never mandated that churches close. That was our choice, just like reopening is now. Well, now that the government is allowing restaurants and businesses to open at 50% capacity and reception halls for weddings to proceed up to 300 guests, we feel like it's a good time now to reopen. And so with those things in mind, we have set an opening date of June 14th. On that day, we will reopen at 10.30 a.m. and we'll have one service at 10.45, just like normal. We're going to hold off on restarting Sunday school for kids and youth and young adults and adults until sometime in the near future. We'll, we'll keep you appraised on that. Please be aware that things are going to be different for a while. They are different everywhere we go. We are different after all of this. The biggest differences are going to be seen in our efforts to adopt some of the government guidelines that are out there. You're going to see a number of increased safety measures that we have in place and some that we suggest you consider for yourself and for your family. For example, six-foot social distancing and the wearing of face masks while you're indoors and extra cleaning and sanitizing of surfaces we're going to try to keep the front doors and the sanctuary doors open so that you don't have to touch them and also to just increase airflow. We're going to be using prepackaged communion elements. We're going to have an offering box available near the exit door for no contact giving, or you can continue to mail in your check or use our online giving. Every other pew uh, will be taped off on the sides of our sanctuary for anyone that wants to social distance while they're in service. And we'll also have our side entrance open for quick access in and out of the sanctuary for anyone that just wants to try to avoid the lobby. And we're also going to continue to pre-record the sermon if you're just not quite ready to return to in-person services. That decision, the, the, the decision to return, that's yours. And you need to seek the Lord's wisdom on that especially for those who are at greater risk, you need to consider what risk you are willing to take on. You know, we're, we're never 100% safe, except in the arms of Jesus. Now, some of these decisions that we're making and others uh, that, that, that other people are making as well may tempt you to judge someone and question their heart and question their motives. Brother and sister, as your pastor, I want to exhort you to fight the urge to judge one another, to judge another person's heart by the mask they wear or the mask they don't wear. I want to encourage you to not judge a person 
based on whether they'll accept your hug or not. Don't judge a person based on whether they stick around after service or leave right away. Every one of us needs to decide what level of risk we're comfortable with, what exposure we want to have, and how to respond to all of it. As brothers and sisters in Christ, our job right now is to compassionately love and care for each other during this confusing and changing time. And listen, if you're not able to love each other, love each other despite these disagreements on safety choices, if you're incapable of focusing your attention on the reason for our worship, Jesus Christ, then please consider staying home. We're gathering because the Lord is worthy of our worship. And gathering gives us a special opportunity to tell him that he is worthy. And that's true when our sanctuary is at 50% capacity. That's true when you wear a mask. That's true when the lobby is empty. That's true in sickness and in health. Let me ask you to just consider this one question before you join us on June 14th. Why are you gathering? Why are you choosing to return to church? Is it because he is worthy or is it because you are bored? Are you returning to worship the one who paid the price for your sin or are you returning to prove a point? June 14th is a great time for us to come together. Together for the common purpose of lifting up the name of Jesus. We're told by Jesus that the world will know we are Christians by our love for one another. I wonder what the world will see in us on June 14th. I know that I, hope, I, I certainly hope to see you with a mask or without, 10 feet away or 10 inches. All right, 10 inches might be too close. <laughs> but I can't wait to see many of you two Sundays from now on June 14th at 10.45 a.m. Come ready to hear from the Spirit, worship the Son, and give thanks to our good, good Father. And hey, listen, if you have any questions, please, reach out to the staff, reach out to our elders, reach out to our admin team. We would be glad to help you because you are loved. <laughs>